Um, so the basics, install node. You can do a brew install node if you have homebrew installed or you can just go out to the website and they have an installer. You can just grab that and install node that way. It seemed like there were some issues with installing node through homebrew. Um, and so the last recommendation I saw, they said install it via the, uh, the installer just off their website. So, so once you have that installed, you'll have NPM available. So you can do NPM things. And in this case, we're just gonna make a new project. We're gonna call it what I learned today or wilt. All right, so the first thing to note is that you can install packages globally or locally. And so if you install them globally, they're gonna be available across all your projects and you have to install them into every project. So you'll probably do that whenever you use things like Grunt or Gulp or JS Lint. Um, and the way that you're gonna do that is just an NPM install and you put a dash G for global and I can say install Grunt. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna get this error. I'm gonna show you this error because everybody's gonna see this. Oh, of course, this time I don't get the error. Okay, let's do it with gold. There we go. Okay, so when you install some of the packages, you're gonna get this error. Um, and the way that you'll know it is you'll see this E access. That means that it couldn't write files that it needed to write, so you have to install it using sudo. Once you do that, it should just work. Okay. Takes it a second. Now I have Gulp installed globally. I could do the same thing with like JS Lint. Basically, your, your tools that you want to use across all your projects, you should be fine installing globally. Okay. Any questions so far? Nope. Nope. Okay. Now, we're in a specific project, so I can install packages specific to this project. So one way to do that is just an npm install lodash. Um, lodash is a library that actually replaced underscore. It's completely compatible with it. It just adds more functionality. It's faster, works a little bit better. We can use it in different projects. So if I do npm install lodash, it's gonna go out to the npm repository and find Lodash and install it into my project here. And then I can pull up Sublime and see that I have this node modules directory in here now and there's Lodash. Okay, so that's cool. But what I'm really doing is building up a project that I want to use. I, I wanna be able to pass this off to another developer. I want other people to be able to just do an NPM install once they're in the directory. I don't want everybody to have to figure out all the packages that I used and decipher that from my project code. So the way you do that is you just do an npm install lodash and you can do a dash dash save and that will save it into package.json. But notice something, I, it, it didn't show up. So you actually have to create package.json before you use the save command. So I'm gonna just copy and paste in this right here. Uh, these are just some of the basic fields. There's more stuff, you can put the repository and all kinds of other crap in here too. Um, but we'll just start out with basic stuff. So now when I do the dash dash save, if I come in here, now it's entered in the dependencies. And when I pass this off to somebody else, they'll be able to just call npm install the root of the project and it will install that. So I can I can now install uh, packages one of two ways. If I know what package I want and I know a version number, I could come in here and type it in. I usually don't know the version number, I have to go look it up. So if I wanted to add something like React at this point, I could do an npm install React. Now go out and grab React, and then you'll notice that this file changes to include the latest version of React. Uh, if you don't know the name of a project or you want to just go poke around, you can do an npm search, I think it was. So say we need a Twitter bootstrap in this project. 
Maybe we'll find we'll probably find a whole bunch of Twitter bootstrap projects. Uh, which actually brings up another point that the NPM repository is going to be filled with all kinds of packages because it's not very difficult to write one. Uh, some of them, well, a lot of them are going to be better than others. So you want to make sure to look at the actual code to know that the library that you're using is worth using. Um, maybe that'll come back sometime today. Uh, I guess the other thing to note here is that NPM was traditionally used to manage the code on the server for Node. Uh, so then Bower came along and there was sort of this separation where NPM would be used to manage the code side or the server side and Bower could be used on the client and could be used in other projects like we use it in Rails and whatnot. But I'm finding now that there are a lot of front end packages available on NPM. So when you write a project, you probably can just get by with NPM and not even use Bower at all anymore. Um, just depends. Okay, so let's let's use this really quick. So I'm going to just create a new file in here called index.js. Ah, .js. Sorry, got to deal with the smaller screen and this thing keeps getting in the way. So now if I wanted to use um, Lodash, I only have to do this. Now I can do something like this. And then you can do things like this. You can actually, you know, you use the library. So now if I just do a console.log type right, we can come out here and run node.js and we get four or five. Um, so this actually points out something I think that's also critical to understand is that node is not a server. Node is a JavaScript runtime. Uh, people typically refer to it as a server and it gets used as a server frequently, but you can use it to write scripts on your local machine in JavaScript if you'd like, and that's what we're doing here is we're just outputting some, um, just some basic data from Node. All right, so let's actually use some Node. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the example from the Node.js website. So here's how you would create a server that just outputs hello world on port 1337. So we've got to run this. Now I have a server running. Let's see if we can find a browser. So you can see that in my browser, if I hit that port, it's going to go there. This is what we use in all our node projects. Um, so I'll, then I could do things like take that data, turn it into a string. Actually, let, let's show this really quick. So if I attempt to just output this data as is, it'll crash the server. So I have to go restart node. It doesn't figure out that you've changed the file. Um, not in this setup anyway. So now if I try to do this and I hit refresh, I get the web page is not available. And if I go out here and look, I can see that there was an error. Um, if In this case, we know exactly where the error is because I just caused it on purpose. But sometimes it can be difficult to look through this call stack and figure out exactly where it is. You kind of have to scan through and find the piece of code that belongs to you. And then it says, oh, it was here on line 13. So if I go and sure enough, there's line 13. So now 
I go, oh, data was an array, and res.n doesn't take an array. It has to be a string or some kind of a buffer. So now I can turn that into a string. Come out here, fire up node. And there you go. So, any questions? Is this all too basic? That was good. Okay. So does everybody understand how the package manager works, how NPM works? Yeah, it's good to go through and be reminded of that. So okay. yeah. also I didn't know about Bower and the relationship between Bower and NPM and that NPM is now kind of taking over packaging from Bower. Yeah, and I, I think that there's probably a lot of you know, quasi-religious debate about that. Um, <laughs> because there's... Yeah, yeah the, the Node community isn't... Well, in the Ruby community, we've always been able to say, hey, there is Ruby gems. You just go out and get it from there. But there was some um, debate about that early on, too, because we had a different Ruby gems manager originally. And then... Somebody said, this isn't working, it's too slow, and they took it over, and then the whole community kind of migrated to the new um, gem system. And we, of course, have Bundler with Ruby, which is really nice. Um, one thing I really do like about the about Bundler is it doesn't just depend on a gem file. It actually has a gem file.lock, so that when you deploy, it says, these are the exact dependencies. Um, with NPM, I, don't, I haven't really seen anything like that. Um, instead, you typically add your node modules to git ignore, and then you hope that you get the right stuff when you go to deploy. There's not a package.lock as far as I've been able to tell. Um, yeah. And then I, I've, I guess one of the people who talked about just using NPM was uh, Pete Hunt uh, from Instagram. He said that you know he just prefers to use NPM, and as long as all the packages, I, all, as long as all the packages you need are on NPM, there's no reason to add power. There's no reason to add complexity to the project. So I would say, if everything you need is in NPM, just use that. Um, but if you find that there is a package that you need that somebody does not written an NPM package for, then go ahead and bring in Bower. But so far in the projects we've built, I haven't actually seen that happen. So don't need Bower, but you know, Bower is still a cool project. It's just, if you don't need it, don't, don't add it just for the sake of adding it. Well, what's, what's an example? I mean, I, what you're saying is that like, if there's a project over on GitHub that no, someone has not made an NPM module about then, or if it's just, you haven't wrapped it in the NPM module metadata, then, I mean, need Bower to turn it into that, or what is it? Your what's the distinction you're making? Um, that that's exactly the, the distinction. If you do, if you can't find what you're looking for when you do npm install, or when you go search through the npm packages, at that point, go to Bower. That's so that you could get it from where else. <laughs> so I'm... that you can get it from Bower's repository, and I believe Bower just uses Git directly. You can just pull stuff off of GitHub. Okay. So, I uh, wonder if it would be just as easy to almost create a package on NPM of whatever you're trying to do. It might, um, but then you and have to you maintain have a lot. It. Then yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you can do Bower, but you can do the same thing with NPM. You can just point it at a GitHub repository. So, I think in most cases you're fine just using NPM.